18, 2009 meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Planning Board. Uh, to my right, well, the town planner, Marina Mira, to my left, Romy Dolliver. And uh, we have a couple of things to go over, ministerial things. The first one is the minutes from the previous meeting. Uh, are there any changes, questions, comments, thoughts, suggestions before we take up a motion? I had a minor change. Go ahead. On page five, um, the requirement of um, number 14 was fulfilled. And I think that was the permit or the, the opinion about the site suitability for um, uh, Sort I want a septic system. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll add that in. Barbara. Oh, you all set? Well, I won't. You, you, I thought you had a comment. That's the only. I, I, I did have a very tiny little comment, and I'm not sure I'm even right about it. But on the, um, sorry, on the sorry. amount of land that was discussed for Mr. Nick Tamero. He proposes to build a single family house on a two and a half acre lot. I think it's 2.66 acres. Okay. With those changes, motion to approve. Motion to approve. Sorry. Motion made by Tom Dolan, seconded by Jim Hubner. Any, any uh, debate on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion? Motion carries five to nothing. Uh, I would like to draw folks' attention to the uh, agenda that's in the back of the room as well as our correspondence site uh, for emails that were that all the boards in town are now receiving at uh, capeelizabeth.com, contactofficials.html. First item on the agenda is a consent agenda item, which is the Jordan Farm Stand Expansion Site Amendment. The Jordan family are requesting a de minimis change to expand the existing farm stand located at 21 Wells Road, section 19-9 which is a site plan amendment. If the uh, applicant could come up to the microphone, introduce themselves and make the presentation, we'll consider the request. Hi, I'm Carol Ann Jordan, and I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Our, our plan is pretty well outlined in the, in the letter and in the drawing that's accompanied it. Maureen, have we gotten any uh, public comment or feedback or anything from yes, on the request? Yes, we've gotten an email that's in support of this. Okay. Any Anybody on the board uh, want to move this to the regular agenda? No, I just have a quick question. Yeah. First of all, I think it's wonderful. I hope you're going to get that fruits in, too. <laughs> and the more we can buy from you, the better off we all are. Um, the only question I have is you did talk to John Atwood, I'm sure. Oh, yes. Okay. That's the only question I have. Okay. Any other discussion on the item? Hearing none, I open the floor to motions. Go ahead, Barbara. A uh, motion for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Jordan family to extend, expand the farm stand located at 21 Wells Road tw to 2,128 square feet be approved. Second on the motion, Liza Quinn. The motion having been made by Barbara Schenkel and seconded by Liza Quinn. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion. I have nothing, the motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. That was painless. <laughs> Sometimes. I, I, hope, I hope all our applicants feel that way. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is Eastman Meadows final subdivision review. If the applicant could or, or their representative step up to the microphone, introduce themselves, and make the presentation, please. I'll just quickly bring up this. Let's hope it works this time. Yes. <laughs> I remember that. Okay. Uh, good evening. My name is Owens McCullough. I'm a civil engineer with the firm of Sevega Technics here tonight on behalf of uh, Wiley Enterprises. With me is Joel Fitzpatrick, um, who is the applicant for this project. Um, 
We were last before the board, I believe, in January of 2009 for a completeness review to begin our final plan process. Um, at that meeting, the board deemed the project uh, complete and ready to go forward for final plan review, uh, which is what we're here for tonight. Uh, just a quick uh, recap um, on the project. Uh, we have attained all of our DEP permits for the project, which included a Site Location or Development Act permit. Uh, we also have attained our Natural Resource Protection Act permit uh, for the wetlands alteration. Uh, the town engineer uh, has reviewed the project and approved it for our stormwater drainage and all the design features on it. Uh, Joel has been to the Conservation Commission uh, on this project. In fact, he uh, went just as recent as March 10th, and I believe Maureen had prepared a memorandum uh, from the Conservation Commission and just a couple of uh, minor items that they requested that uh, Joel uh, works with them on, and I can speak to that here in a moment. Uh, this first slide I brought up just sort of gives everybody a quick overview of, of the process we've been to, which actually started uh, back in 2006 and progressing through a number of uh, planning board workshops, working with staff, eventually coming to the planning board, uh, then working through all of our permits. Um, so working through all of the approvals uh, up through uh, January 2009 and then today. So it's been quite a lengthy process. I think it was a good process. We've spent a lot of time working on the details of the project, and, and in the end, we think it's developed for a better project. This first slide just shows you the location of our project with respect to the surrounding area. Um, our project involves uh, a pretty significant open space component of it. Uh, it's 47 uh, total units, once the existing farmhouse, 46. Um, uh, condominiums. Uh, this is an age-restricted uh, development targeting the uh, 55 and older group uh, for the project. There's, uh, some of you may remember, uh, geez, probably six or eight months ago, I made quite a, pr a very lengthy presentation on uh, the market demands and the needs for this sort of housing. And in fact, the applicant has had a number of contacts from folks as he's been developing uh, the plans for this project, expressing interest in, uh, in this sort of uh, development. Um, the dark green area is, shows our uh, open space component of the project, and which is uh, pretty significant. We're exceeding the uh, mandatory open space requirement. I believe we're approaching about 65% open space for the whole project. The project will be served by uh, public sewer, water, underground, electric, and utilities. Uh, the road infrastructure will all be private, uh, and it, uh, none of it will be offered to the town uh, for acceptance. As part of the project, we've got uh, trails uh, that will connect to the open space, uh, the Winnick Woods open space, uh, which is a fairly large open space complex. Well, I think one of the questions the Conservation Commission had was about uh, possibly modifying one of the connection points and in fact our plans even have notes that when we go to build the trails, uh, our trails, that we have to coordinate with the town planner to finalize those exact locations. It's intended uh, to be like that so that we can match in appropriately to the uh, adjacent trails for the project. This is a little bigger blow up of the project that shows the uh, types of units. Uh, we have a variation of duplex, quadruplex, and singleplex units. The quadruplex units, um, all of them have garages uh, for them. Uh, the architectural style uh, on them are uh, designed as uh, single-story uh, units. And the next slide gives you a little perspective of, of what we anticipate uh, those units to look like. Uh, so they're all single story, they're designed uh, for those folks uh, that might be uh, getting up in years uh, so that they can transition out of either their single family homes into a condominium. Uh, the units uh, will provide, you know, all of the, all of the needs uh, that come with the condominium, uh, garages, 
Uh, grounds will be maintained. We have a pretty aggressive landscape plan, which we've talked about with this uh, board and staff uh, a number of times on the project. So, and the colors, um, this gives you a sample of what the colors, an earth tone color is what we're proposing uh, with those units. And that's just an aerial that shows kind of an overview of the location uh, in the general vicinity. And I'll go back to the site plan. Um, as we indicated, uh, we've been here um, several times. Uh, tonight we're here hopefully for final plan approval on the project. Um, if approved tonight, uh, the applicant uh, is looking to go into construction as soon as he gets some pre-sales in place uh, on the project. The bank financing is in place, uh, so uh, he's already got prices from a contractor he works with. Uh, so uh, as soon as uh, we work through all the final approvals, then get the bonds in place, uh, the project would go forward. Uh, Maureen has prepared a very detailed uh, summary of the project in her findings of fact and staff memo. Um, I can go through all of that if the board wants, or but I think we've been through a lot of it in the past, uh, so I've tried to avoid going through all the detailed items again. Um, and I'll leave that up to you folks if you want me to. At this point, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we may revisit some of the specific items, but to go through them one at a time at this stage, I, I don't think is yeah, helpful. We're prepared to do that. So at this point, um, I'm here to answer any questions the board has. Uh, Joel is also here with me tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Can we give open for real Okay. Um, if, the, if the applicant is all done with their presentation, what I'd like to do now is open up the uh, podium to a public hearing and invite anyone that wants to make any comments, pro or con, or uh, concerning the application, step up to the microphone, identify yourself, and we'll listen to what you have to say. Sure. Name and address, right? Anyone wishing to speak concerning the Eastman Meadow subdivision and resource protection permit application? Going once. Going twice. Nobody wishing to speak. Last time. And what I'll do is close the public hearing. And uh, open up the floor to any comments from the planning, town planner. Uh, the only comment I have is uh, I think there's a mistake in one of the findings that um, your board members has kindly pointed out. Uh, I think you want to go to page six under finding number one. Um, it references section 11 24 and it should be section 16 2 4. Um, the other thing I, I did want to point out. Um, there's a few board members who were here for the Spurwink Woods project and remember how we did this, but most of you were not. Um, the findings of fact that have been drafted uh, mirror the standards in the subdivision ordinance, both the state standards and the local standards, as well as the resource protection permit standards. Hence, there are many, many findings of fact. My suggestion would be uh, for the board to consider having uh, each one of you take a turn reading it so that none, no one person has to read all of them. So for example, Mr. Hubner could start with one, so on and so forth. And to my memory, we, did we take a separate vote on each one? You took a separate vote on each one. Yes. And uh, obviously that involves discussion of each one if we, if we so choose. Um, so is that the recommendation at this point? Oh. Yes. Okay. Well then I'll open up the floor to the first brave soul who would like to Prior to doing that, Mr. Chair, um, there's, a, there's a letter attached to the DAC. Yes. Um, <clears throat> could you just explain that to me? Certainly. Um, you typically get a letter from the town engineer and uh, this project. There was no letter to provide you with on review of the project because the review was completed at the last meeting. So there were no additional comments. The only outstanding item was uh, the, pr the preparation of performance guarantee. Mm -hmm. Typically what happens is that the applicant is required to provide a letter of credit or um, an escrow account format and also provide an estimate 
but we don't actually require them to sign the letter of credit until they're ready to start construction. So what this letter demonstrates is that the applicant has provided an estimate for the amount if the project were to start this month. And these are the changes that the town attorney, the town engineer would recommend to that estimate. Uh, so the proposed condition, the proposed motion actually doesn't say you have to post a letter of credit for this amount. It says you have to, before you start construction, you have to pro provide a performance guarantee in an amount acceptable to the attorney, in a form accept in an amount acceptable to the engineer, in a form acceptable to the attorney, all to be acceptable to the town manager. This letter is just demonstration that he's gone as far as he can with that before he actually starts construction. And which finding of fact is that then specifically related? It's actually not a finding of fact. It's a proposed condition of approval, which would be on page 13. Um, number one, that there be no alteration of the site until a performance guarantee has been submitted in a form acceptable to the town attorney and amounts acceptable to the town engineer and all acceptable to the town manager. And this approach actually is, if, if, the, if the applicant can't start for six months, whenever he does decide to start, he would have to post a guarantee and verify that whatever the amount is, is good for that time period. Okay. You're all saying. <laughs> there was a, we got an email today, or there's somewhere there's a, he's adding a parking lot or enlarging it or something at the trailhead, 8,000 square feet. Was that? Yes. It, it, and it, it, what my suggestion would be, would be if that, you make a motion for approval, that the three, uh, three items on the memo from the Conservation Commission be added as conditions of approval to the motion. Okay. <coughs> Is that an email we had to print out and it's not in here right now? No, it's one that I passed yeah. out and um, yes. Those additional conditions on the last page, on the last page. Okay. Would you like a little more description on that? No, I got it. I got it. I had read it. I just couldn't find it. Are we going to start with the findings of fact? Is that what we're going to do, Peter? Yes. Stage right. <laughs> if you want to, <laughs> that's a good idea. That's a fair way to do it. Um, findings of fact number one: the proposed Eastman Meadows project requires review under Section 16-2-4 Major Subdivision Review. Section 19-7-2, open space zoning provisions, and section 19-8-3, resource protection permit standards. These reviews will satisfy all land use review requirements under the zoning ordinance in accordance with town practices for condominium projects. <coughs> I presume we're just going to continue on. Well, I, th I thought the idea was we we're going to take a vote on each one. I mean, it should go quickly if unless it, it, it. So, the uh, the motion for that finding of fact having been made by Mr. Hubner, do I, say, do I hear a second? Uh, by Barbara Schenkel. Romy, tell me to slow down if you need me to. <laughs> uh, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. All in favor of the motion. Okay, go ahead. Number two. Um, the, the proposed project is a clustered residential development and permanently preserved open space, and these uses do not generally include discharges to the water or air that are regulated as pollution. The plan will not result in undue water or air pollution. The project does not include alterations to floodplain areas. The project will be served by public sewer instead of subsurface disposal systems. The slope of the land, the creation of a 250-foot wide natural vegetation buffer, and construction of stormwater infiltration beds will mitigate the impact of stormwater flows. Motion having been made by Tom Dolan. Do I hear a second? Uh, second by Eliza Quinn. Discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion. Motion carries 5 nothing. 
Wherever you're up. Number three. Mm -hmm. Based on the comments of the Portland Water District, the project has sufficient water available for the reasonably foreseeable needs of the subdivision. Motion having been made by Barbara Schenkel. Do I hear a second? Jim Hubner. Discussion on the motion. Hearing none. All in favor of the motion. Number four, Liza. Number four, the plan includes a sediment and erosion control plan consistent with best management practices. The plan will not cause an unreasonable soil will not cause an unreasonable soil erosion or reduction in the capacity of the land to hold water, so that a dangerous or unhealthy <coughs> condition may result. Motion having been made by uh, Liza Quinn. Do I hear a second? Jim Hubner. Discussion on the motion. Hearing none. All in favor of the motion. So, motion carries five nothing. <coughs> Back to Jim. The applicants have submitted a traffic study prepared by John Adams, professional traffic engineer of Sebago Technics, that analyzes the traffic to be generated by the proposed project. On behalf of the town, Tom Errico, professional, tra yeah, a professional traffic engineer of Wilbur Smith Associates, conducted a peer review of the traffic analysis and found it consistent with traffic with standard traffic engineering practice. Both engineers found that the project would not create unsafe conditions. The plan will not cause unreasonable highway or public road congestion or unsafe conditions with respect to use of the highways, public roads, or traffic patterns, alone or in conjunction with existing or contemplated road use. Uh, the motion having been made by Jim Hubner. Do I hear a second? Um, Dolan, uh, any discussion on the motion? Hearing, um, oh, Barbara, go ahead. I would just like to remind anybody who might be watching, because everybody here isn't here for Eastman Meadows, that there is a note on the plans that the applicant has agreed that after 35 permits have been issued that they will take another look at the, the traffic and see if there's any congestion or any problems. And if there are, he's agreed to um, come up with some kind of a mitigation plan. So it's just a reminder that traffic was a consideration, but the applicant has taken steps to do whatever he possibly can to make it correct. Thank you. Any uh, further discussion on the motion? Somebody stop mine. Not mine. <laughs> Hearing none, uh, I think we had a motion and a second. All in favor of the motion? Next item. Based on the recommendation of Bob Malley, Town Public Works Director and Sewer Superintendent, the project will provide for adequate sewage waste disposal by utilizing the public mm -hmm. sewer system. Uh, the motion having been made by Tom Dolan, do I hear a second from Barbara Schenkel? Any discussion on this part of the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion. Motion carries 5 nothing. <laughs> Item number 7. Well, based on the comments from the Public Works, Works Director, the project will not cause, cause an unreasonable burden on the ability of a municipality to dispose of solid waste and sewage if municipal services are to be utilized. Motion having been made by Barbara Schenkel. Do I hear a second? Liza Quinn. Any discussion on the motion? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor of the motion? Motion carries 5 nothing. Item number 8. The 1989 Visual Resources Assessment Report conducted by the town does not list the project area as a significant scenic area or vista. The project has been designed as an open space zoning subdivision, resulting in conservation of most of the 26.5 acres of open space in its natural state as forest and wetlands. Wetlands expert Dale Knapp of Woodlot Alternatives, now Santex, submitted a report dated on 10-3107, an oral testimony that the vernal pool habitat was not located on the portion of the property proposed for development. Rod Howe, the U U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and Bob Green of the Maine Department of Environmental Protections concurred with Mr. Knapp's findings. No historic sites listed on the 1993 comprehensive plan are located on the property. The bulk of the wetland shorelands on the site, including all of the RP1 wetland, are located within open space where public access will, permanently, will be permanently preserved. The project will not have an undue adverse effect on the scenic or natural beauty of the area. Scenic vistas, aesthetics, wildlife habitat, historic sites, or rare and irreplaceable natural areas, or any public rights for physical or visual access to the shoreline. 
The motion having been made by uh, Liza Quinn, do I hear a second? Uh, from Jim Hubner, any discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion? Tom? Motion carries five nothing. Uh, item number nine. Number nine, based on a letter from, <laughs> yeah, you gave that one to me. Ellen, new, new owner of TD Bank North, the applicant has adequate financial capacity. The applicant has provided a list of previously completed projects and the professional credentials of the project engineering team and has adequate technical capability. Motion having been made by Jim Hubner. Do I hear a second? Tom Dolan. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion? Motion carries 5 nothing. Next item is item number 10. Item number 10. And for the board's benefit, there's a substantive change to this as it's currently drafted. The project in whole or in part is not within 250 feet of wetlands as defined in the zoning ordinance. The DEP site location permit and stormwater permit has been issued. Could I make a suggestion? Certainly. I'm going to suggest that in between the word pro the and project, you insert the developed portion of the project. OK. Because some people might talk about the boundary lines as the project, but I think you're really talking about where there is development. So what are the two words you want to add, Maureen? Develop? I would say the, the developed portion of the project. Four words. I'll reread that for the benefit. Sure. Number 10. The developed portion of the project, in whole or in part, is not within 250 feet of wetlands as defined in the zoning ordinance. A DEP site location permit and stormwater permit has been issued. Motion having been made, a second by Eliza Quinn. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion. Next item is item number 11. Based on the aquifer mapping in the 1993 <coughs> comprehensive plan, no aquifer <coughs> is located in the project area. The project will not alone or in conjunction with existing activities adversely affect the quality of groundwater. Motion having been made by Barbara Schenkel. Do I hear a second? Jim Hubner. <coughs> Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion. Motion carries 5 nothing. Next item on the agenda, item number 12. All right, number 12, based on the Federal Emergency Management Agency's flood boundary and floodway maps and flood insurance rate maps, the developed portions of the subdivision are not in a flood-prone area. Second. Motion to be made by Liza Quinn, seconded by Barbara Schenkel. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion. Motion carries 5 nothing. Item number 13. Back to Jim. Because a project employs a cluster design that reduces road and utility lengths, the project will, will promote energy conservation and efficiency. Motion having been made by Jim Hubner. Do I hear a second? Barbara Schenkel. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion. Motion carries 5 nothing. Item number 14. Number 14, the town engineer has reviewed the project plans and made recommendations in numerous letters to the planning board to make the road designs for the project comply with the road classification standards table including in this, included in the subdivision ordinance, except for waivers requested consistent with private roads located in a condominium project. The road classification standards table was created to implement the recommendations for road design in the comprehensive plan. The proposed roads conform to the comprehensive plan as adopted by the town council. The board has required provisions for the projection of roads or for access to adjoining property, whether subdivided or not, as the property edges are, made, are either made up of wetlands or but permanently protected open space. Excuse me, has not required provision. I apologize. Second. Motion having been made by Tom Dolan and seconded by Barbara Schenkel. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all of those in favor of the motion. Motion carries 5 nothing. 15. The Public Works Director, Town Engineer, Fire Chief, and Code Enforcement Officer do not oppose the proposed private road system with two-point access points from a public road and no wider way for the private road. 
Local roads are laid out so that their use by through traffic is discouraged and that the roads are designed so as to provide safe, convenient, and attractive access from the subdivision to previously existing or proposed public ways and includes two or more means of such vehicular access. Motion having been made by Barbara Schenkel. Do I hear a second from Liza Quinn? All in, uh, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion. Motion carries five nothing. Okay, number 16. Based on the plans which show preservation of naturally vegetated buffers and open space and additional plantings where existing vegetation will not be preserved during construction, plants or other types of vegetative cover are preserved or placed throughout and around the perimeter of any proposed subdivision to provide for an adequate buffer, reduction of noise and lights, separation between the subdivision abutting properties, and enhancement of its appearance. Motion having been made by Eliza Quinn, do I hear a second? Barbara Schenkel, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion carries by <laughs> item number 17. Number 17, and I do appreciate giving me the one sentence ones. I do appreciate that. <laughs> no off-road parking lots, storage areas, rubbish disposal areas, or similar improvements exposed to public roads or to residential areas are proposed. Motion to have you been made by Jim Huber. Do I hear a second? Tom Dolan. Any discussion on this motion? Hearing none. All those in favor of the motion. Motion carries 5 nothing. <clears throat> Number 18. The roads are proposed to be private and maintained by the Condominium Association and provide two means of access to the project. Proposed roads are laid out in an attractive manner in order to enhance the livability and amenity of the subdivision conform to existing topography and minimize cuts and fills. Motion having been made by Tom Dolan uh, and seconded by Barbara Schenkel. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion. Motion carries 5 nothing. Item 19. The project is primarily located in a former farm field and all the proposed units will have access to direct sunlight. The proposed subdivision design has considered protecting and assure, assuring access to direct sunlight and locating truck structures so as to minimize shading of either existing or proposed structures. Motion having been made by Barbara Schenko. Do I have a second from Tom Dolan? Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. All those in favor of the motion? I have nothing. Item 20. Number 20, the subdivision is not designed as a traditional grid system. Block lengths do not do exceed 1,000 feet to suit the topography and character of the subdivision and to avoid an awkward road pattern or detrimental effect to adjacent property. Motion having been made by Eliza Quinn. Do I have a second from Jim Hubner? Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion. Motion carries 5 nothing. Number 21, based on comments from the police chief, road names have been used which do not duplicate or may be confused with the names of its existing roads. Second. Motion having been made by Jim Hubner and seconded by Barbara Schenkel. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. Um, all those in favor of the motion. Motion carries 5 nothing. Number 22. The applicant has submitted a stormwater plan prepared by Sebago Technics Incorporated, which is reviewed and accepted, has been reviewed and accepted by town engineer Steve Harding of Oast Associates as in compliance with the town stormwater ordinance. The subdivision involves more than 10,000 square feet of impervious surface, paving, clearing, or vegeta vegetative alteration and complies with the provisions and improvements for the control of stormwater runoff governed by Chapter 18, Article 2 stormwater control ordinance. Drainage easements have been provided where channeling surface water within such subdivision on private property will require town maintenance. Motion having been made by Tom Dolan, do I have a second? Barbara Schenkel, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion. Motion carries five nothing, almost halfway. <laughs> 23. The project includes pedestrian easements for the public to access protected open space. Deeds for these areas have been submitted to the town. The plan includes pedestrian easements where a pedestrian access way would add to the town's green belt, green belt system and is important to provide access open space. 
Motion having been made by Barbara Schenkel. Do I have a second from Tom Dolan? Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion. Motion carries 5 nothing. 24. 24, the condominium project is located in the RB zoning district, which mandates a project design in compliance with the open space zoning standards, section 1972. Under this section, the planning board has the authority to vary dimensional standards to promote clustered development and preserve open space. The distance between buildings is at least the height of the taller building. All buildings are set back at least, at least 20 feet from the property line, and the buildings are set back at least 10 feet from the proposed roads. The building units are configured to orient to the proposed roads. A single lot is proposed for the, for the existing farmhouse and barn. The lot is 15,000 square feet, which exceeds minimum lot size of 10,000 square feet and complies with the average lot size not to exceed 15,000 square feet. The area and other dimensional standards comply with the requirements of the zoning ordinance. Motion having been made by Eliza Quinn, do I have a second? Tom Dolan. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion carries 5 nine. Number 25, as shown on the plan, each property is provided with vehicular access to each lot by an abutting public or private road. Motion having been made by seconded by Barbara Schenkel. Do I have any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion carries 5 nothing. Item 20, finding fact number 26. 26, the project has been designed to place most of the new units in a former farm field and retain most of the existing vegetation in permanently preserved open space. The cluster development has been designed, sited, and laid out as to minimize disturbance of existing topography <coughs> and ground cover, provide mi maximum usable natural or improved open space, reflect imaginative use of the site, and be compatible with any surrounding land uses and their character. Uh, motion having been made by Tom Dillon. Do I have a second? Liza Quinn. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion. I have nothing. Motion carries. Finding fact number 27. For the proposed plan and in an effort to blend the new development with the existing neighborhood, sidewalks and or curbing have been provided where they are necessary for maintenance and public safety. Motion then we've made by Barbara Schenko. Do I have a second? Tom Dolan. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion. Motion, uh, motion carries 5 nothing. <coughs> in fact, number 28. 26.5 acres of open space, including RP1 and RP2 wetlands, will be permanently preserved. Of that amount, 16.4 acres will be retained by the Condominium Association, and 9.96 acres will be donated to the town of Cape Elizabeth. The applicant, wherever practical, has preserved natural fe features such as water course or bodies, existing trees of 10 inches or more in diameter, base height, marshes, swamps, or other areas identified on the official wetlands map, open space, scenic points, historic spots, and unusual or striking topographic features which add to the attractiveness of the subdivision. The applicant has agreed to dedicate 9.96 acres of open space to the town itself conveyed through appropriate legal instruments reviewed by the town attorney. Motion having been made by Eliza Quinn. Do I hear a second? Jim Hubner. Any discussion on the motion? Instead of base, actually, basal, B-A-S-A-L, I believe is the proper term. Actually, Mr. Hubner, base height is the wording in the base? subdivisions. I didn't say it was accurate. It is the words that are used in the subdivision ordinance. Because it's supposed well, to be. I'm not, I'm not saying correct. the term is correct. Okay. Right. Well, the idea is. I understand. Okay. So we need to change the ordinance. Right ahead. When the story by rhythm off, we were on a roll. Right. Okay. Who made that motion? Which one are we using? I messed everybody up. <laughs> no, no. Um, I'd say leave that the was, way the ordinance That was made by Ms. I seconded it already. You already seconded it. All right, that's right. Motion having been made and seconded. Any discussion on the, any further discussion no. on the motion? No. My <laughs> Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion carries 5 nothing. Uh, finding a fact number 29. 
29, the applicant will permanently preserve 26.5 acres of open space with 65% of the total acreage of the project. 72% of the 26.5 acres is considered usable. The open space zoning standards require that 40% of the gross area be preserved as open space and that at least one third of that amount be usable open space. Where the project has not been designed in accordance with the open space zoning provisions, the open space impact fee in the subdivision standards requires an open space dedication of 12,937 square feet per lot per unit for a total of 13.95 acres. The applicant has donated land to comply with the open space impact fee. Second. Motion having been made by Jim Hubner and seconded by Barbara Schenkel. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion. Motion carried. Item number 30. Number 30. Proposed deeds have been submitted that prohibit development on the donated open space and the condominium documents prohibit development on the open space to be retained by the condominium association. Common open space shall be maintained to ensure that its use and enjoyment is not diminished or destroyed with the applicant submitting written documents identifying that the town shall own the land and be responsible for said maintenance. Motion that been made by Tom Dolan. Do I hear a second? Jim Hubner, any discussion on the motion? Yeah. Yes. Is it accurate that the town will own all of the common open space? Doesn't that include a portion that will be retained by the association? That, uh, where it says the town shall own the land, it's the, it's the portion of the land that the town is going to own. It's not the entire space. So you're right, 9.968 acres will be donated to the town and the remaining 16.54 acres will be held by the condominium association. So can we amend 30 to reflect that the town shall own the 9.96 acres to be donated and be responsible for said maintenance? And who seconded that? Uh, Jim. Can we have a... <coughs> I've yeah, got it. I, yeah, I think we have it. But Tom, you made that motion and, and amended it. Jim, is that second? Yes. Any other discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in, all those in favor of the motion? Motion carries 5 nothing. Uh, finding effect number 31. No systems are proposed for the disposal of sewage for the development. Motion having been made by Barbara Schenkel. Do I hear a second? Question? Yeah. No systems? Uh, no systems are going to have a holding tank. Subsurface systems. Oh, no. Somebody should put that word in there. Yeah, that's <laughs> the office. I amended oh, to no subsurface. Yeah. Uh, nobody's going to live there after the first week. <laughs> 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 okay, so the motion is, I mean, the uh, finding is no subsurface systems are proposed for the disposal of sewage for the development. Is that correct? Barbara? Correct. And who seconded that? I will second that. Tom. Glad we have Jim here. <laughs> uh, having been seconded by Tom Dolan, any further discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion? The one sentence one's given. <laughs> uh, next, item, next finding of fact is number 32. According to the wetland assessment by Dale Knapp, Santec, the preserved open space areas include three possible vernal pools, all of which are located in the preserved open space areas. The 9.96 acre parcel to be donated to the town is adjacent to 70 plus acres of town owned open space and will enhance the wildlife, wildlife habitat values of those areas. The project makes adequate provision for the protection of wildlife, wildlife habitat and fisheries areas which may include but are not limited to maintenance of wildlife travel lanes and the preservation and buffering of wildlife habitat areas from proposed development activities. Motion having been made by Eliza Quinn. Do I have a second by Jim Hubner? Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion. Motion carries number 33. Number 33, based on the plans and the requirements of the addressing ordinance, the numbering of the individual residential dwelling units will be clearly visible. Signs clearly identifying the house numbers in each set of dwelling units will be placed along the road leading to each set of units. 
Motion having been made by Jim Hubner. Do I hear a second? Tom Dolan. Um, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. All those in favor of the motion. Motion carries 5 nothing. Item number 34. 34. The applicant has submitted letters from Central Maine Power, Time Warner Cable, and the Portland Water District regarding provision of services to the subdivision. All utilities, including but not limited to the provision of water, gas, not applicable in this area of Cape Elizabeth, and electricity, is adequate for the proposed development. Motion has been made by Tom Dolan. Do I hear a second? Second. Uh, Barbara Schenkel. Since gas is not applicable, why is it even in there? Because it's the Sub standard in the subdivision ordinance. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? <laughs> <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion carries five less. Finding fact number 35. The applicant proposes to market the single-story two-bedroom units to persons 55 years old and older. An analysis by planning staff found that from the existing 296 condominiums in town, 11 children were enrolled in the Cape Elizabeth school system. The planning board finds that the majority of expected residents in the project will be within the target market. Motion having been made by Barbara Schenkel. Do I hear a second? Liza Quinn. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion. Motion carries 5 nothing. Finding fact number 36. The wetland alterations shown on the plan include filling to move a road away from the existing home of an abutter, to landscape an area with new wetland plantings, and to enlarge an existing pond. The project will not materially obstruct the flow of surface or subsurface waters across or from the alteration area. Motion having been made by Liza Quinn. Do I have a second by Tom Dolan? Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion carries 5 nothing. Number 37, based on the stormwater management plan prepared and reviewed by professional licensed civil engineers, the project will not impound surface waters or reduce the absorb absorptive capacity of the alteration area so as to cause or increase the flooding of adjacent properties. <clears throat> the um, motion that we made by Jim Hubner. Do I have a second? Second. Barbara Schenkel. All those, uh, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion. Motion carries five nothing. Uh, item finding effect number 38. Number 38. Based on the stormwater management plan prepared and reviewed by professional licensed civil engineers, the project will not increase the flow of surface waters across or the discharge of surface waters from the alteration area so as to threaten injury to the alteration area or to upstream or, and or downstream lands by flooding, draining, erosion, sedimentation, or otherwise. Motion having been made by Tom Dolan. Do I have a second? Liza Quinn. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion carries 5 nothing. Finding of fact number 39. Based on the review conducted by Dale Knapp, Stantec, Rod Howe, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and Bob Green, Maine Department of Environmental Protection, the project will not result in significant damage to spawning grounds or habitat for aquatic life, birds, or other wildlife. Motion having been made by Barbara Schenkel. Do I have a second? Isaac Quinn. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion carries 5 nothing. Item uh, finding fact number 40. The structure is proposed to be constructed within a wetland. The project Ooh. will. No. To, mm -mm. This, no structure. <laughs> <laughs> no structure is proposed to be constructed within a wetland. The project will not pose problems related to support of structure, to the support of structures. A motion having been made eloquently by Liza <laughs> Quinn. <laughs> Do I have a second? second. <laughs> Barbara Schenkel, all those in favor of the motion? Discussion. Discussion on the motion? No. no. Finding of fact number 41. 41, the project area does not include coastal dunes or continuous, contiguous back dune areas. <laughs> motion having been made by Jim Hubner. Do I have a second? Tom Dolan. 
Um, discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion carries five nothing. Uh, finding of fact number 42. Number 42. The plans include preservation of open space to, preserve, to be preserved in its natural state through a conservation restriction included in the deed of the land to the town and restrictions in the condominium documents. The project will maintain or improve ecological and aesthetic values. Motion having been made by Tom Dolan. Do I have a second? Liza Quinn. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion carries 5 nothing. Finding of fact number 43. The plans include a 250-foot buffer from RP1 wetlands, some of which will be used to install a bioretention filler bed to cleanse stormwater before it enters Trout Brook. The project will maintain an adequate buffer between the wetland and adjacent land uses. Motion having been made by Barbara Schenkel. Do I have a second? Jim Hubner. Should any, we any discussion amend that to be filter bed instead of filler bed? I mean, it, it was read as, as filler bed. I just okay. want to make sure should, you should the filter, filter bed, bed to filter sedimentation. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. As amended? Barbara? Oh, sure. I, no, I said it wrong. <laughs> <coughs> motion having been made, amended, and seconded. Any dis further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor? This is a tough group. You can't even say anything. <laughs> <laughs> this is just the first item. <laughs> um, finding a fact number 44. Did I call a roll on that? The plans include an erosion and sediment control plan reviewed, by, reviewed and found acceptable by town engineer Steve Harding. The project will be accomplished in conformance with the erosion prevention provisions of Environmental Quality Handbook Erosion and Sediment Control, published by the Maine Soil and Water Conservation Commission dated March 1986, or subsequent revisions thereof. Motion having been made by Liza Quinn. Any, do I hear a second? Barbara Schenkel. Any discussion on the motion? Should that be amended to say that the town engineer is actually Oston Associates, Steve Hartman <coughs> being an employee thereof? He's serving in his individual capacity. If, if you wanted to do that, he actually has been designated by the council okay, that's through fine. a contract with OST, so either way I think it would be appropriate. That's fine. Any further discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion. Motion carries five. Number 45. There are only three more of these. <laughs> Next time I have trouble sleeping, I know what I'm going to read. <laughs> The Public Works Director, acting as Sewer Superintendent, and the Town Engineer have revised and found acceptable the Sewer Infrastructure Construction Plans. The project will be accomplished without discharging wastewater from buildings or from other construction into wastewater treatment facilities in violation of Section 15-1-4 of the Sewage Ordinance. Motion having been made by Jim Huebner. Do I hear a second? Liza Quinn. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion. Motion carries 5 nothing. <laughs> I just said I'm glad I'm not reading. <laughs> Tom, you're up. Number 46. The applicant has provided a net residential acreage calculation as follows. Total area, 40.82 acres, minus roads, 1.43 acres, right of way, 513 square feet, Ledge outcrop, 8,712 square feet. Ponds, 23,462 square feet. Existing easements, 2,350 square feet. Floodplain, 4,397 square feet. RP1 wetland, 304,920 square feet. Equals a net residential area of 31.48 acres. Allowing for 45 units, of which five will be moderate income affordable, plus one moderate income affordable housing bonus unit, and one market rate unit for a total of 47 units to be built as 46 condominiums and one single family home. The net residential acreage and density 
complies with the zoning ordinance. Motion having been made by Tom Dolan. Do I hear a second? Liza Quinn. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion. Uh, item number 47, finding a fact. The project substantially complies with the requirements of section 16-3-1 subdivision standards and section 19-8-3 resource protection permit standards. Do you want me to go on? Um, no, I having, motion having been made by Barbara Schenkel on, on finding fact number 47. Do I hear a second? Tom Dolan. Any discussion on this item? Hearing none, all those in favor of the item. Motion carries 5 nothing. Okay. I was going to take a crack at this. I'd like to make a motion. Therefore, be it order that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Wiley Enterprises LLC for major subdivision review, private road review, and a resource protection permit for Eastman Meadows, a 46-unit condominium with clubhouse and one single-family lot located at 68 Eastman Road be approved subject to the following conditions. Number one, that there be no alteration of the site until a performance guarantee has been submitted in a form acceptable to the town attorney, an amount acceptable to the town engineer, and all acceptable to the town manager. Number two, that an easement for parking and maintenance of the area located at the end of the northerly easement and adjacent to Spurwink Avenue, as shown on the attached plan, be provided. I assume the plan will be provided. Number three, that two connection points from the north northerly easement be provided to Winnick Woods and field located by the applicant and the Conservation Commission to minimize the length of trail over wet areas and maximize privacy for the condominium, condominium units. And number four, that the applicant be allowed to install a split rail fence along the southern edge of the northern pedestrian easement. Motion having been made by Tom Dolan. Do I, do I have a second? Barbara Schenkel. Just so it's clear, a yes vote is in favor. Do I have any discussion on the motion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? All those opposed? None. The motion carries 5 nothing. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. There's a lot of time. <laughs> and uh, Owens, if you could uh, yeah, shut down the audio visuals, that would be helpful. We're just going to take a second to uh, reset the computer here. Sure. Okay. Okay. I think we're all set. So we're going to roll right to the next item. Next item on the agenda is the Daw Road Extension Private Road Review. All set. Uh, Nick, if you could uh, take the podium and state your name and address. And oh, yeah. what's, uh, what's up next is the Daw Road Extension Private Road Review. Nicholas Tamaro is requesting a private road review to extend Daw Road to a new lot in, located in the facility, vicinity of Daw Road and Valley Road in compliance with the road standards in the subdivision ordinance, section 16 3 2. 
road design and construction standards public hearing. If the applicant could step up, identify himself, and make a presentation. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Nick Tamaro. I currently live at 64 Two Lights Road. Um, tonight, I have with me Steve Blaze, professional engineer, uh, the landowner, current landowner, Nate Maxwell, and the neutral facilitator, David Plimpton, who helped us with the process. Um, we've made a lot of changes since our last meeting, and I appreciate um, the board working with me on my time restraints and working, letting me work with OST in the, the time that was allotted. I'm going to run down through what we changed on the survey plan, um, which is the plan we had at the site walk, and then I'm going to let Steve Blaze run down through the engineering aspect uh, of the project. Um, on the plan, we've corrected and added the following items, uh, and by saying plan, I mean Dale Brewer's plan, the survey plan. Um, we changed the arrows pointing to the emergency vehicle turnaround. Um, added the utilities from the street to the house, which have been taken off now, and they're now on the engineer's plan. Things have changed a little bit after I met with OST, which was after this was submitted. Um, we've added site distances, which were supplied by uh, Bob Malley, Public Works Director. Um, added the location of the catch basin, and added the culvert and pipe to divert the water away from the neighbor's houses. Uh, that has also been changed on Dale's plan. It's now on the engineer's plan. Um, we've added a note stating the road would be inspected by a licensed engineer before any building permits would be issued. Um, we added a note stating that this is a private road and would resemble a private access way more than a private road. Um, we added monuments to the plan. On page two of the construct construction detail plan by Teradyne Consultants, um, we changed the right of way from 30 feet to 40 feet, which was corrected. <coughs> And we changed the wearing surface from three inches to six inches. I'm sorry, the what surface? The wearing surface. Wait, wait, I shouldn't it, hear the word. Yep, no, that's fine. Um, the following waivers we asked for were um, sidewalks, curbing, paving of the private road, paving of the emergency <coughs> vehicle turnaround, trees and landscaping, and dimensions of the road from 22 feet wide with a four foot shoulder to 14 feet wide with a two foot shoulder to resemble a private access way. Um, also retained a letter um, from Peter Gleason, which was included in this, which you all have a copy of, um, as long as they're green with OS, the engineer, that the surface was proper for the emergency vehicles. Um, I agreed to meet with uh, OST and Bob Malley. We did so, and it, the outcome of that meeting, I agreed to um, proceed and hire an engineer to help me with the stormwater and drainage issues um, that occur on the site. During that uh, process, I recruited Steve Blaze, and he worked um, with myself and Bob, and um, the neighbor to the right of the access way, John Holmes. Um, we all met on site to go over the, some of the issues and concerns to make sure everybody's on the same page. Um, we've re-diverted some of the water and I'll let Steve go into that. So I'm gonna turn it over to Steve Blaze. Hi, uh, Steve Blaze. Um, I was hired by Nick to look, as he mentioned, to, to look at the stormwater and the grading. Um, and I will turn to the plan, uh, which is labeled C1. Uh, I called it uh, Private Road Grading and Utility Plan. Um, what I did is I pitched the roadway at about 1.5%. It's a straight shot, grade-wise. Crowned road, water is going to hit the surface, go off to the sides like a traditional roadway. There are some shallow ditches on each side. Um, the roadway will be built. Do you have the plan? You don't have the plan. I don't think we have that. I, I submitted that to, to um, Steve Harding at OS Associates. When was it? Thursday? Uh, Friday morning, actually. And Steve has reviewed it. I, I, I met with, uh, was it Friday we met with Bob Malley? Thursday. It was Thursday. And, um, that's just that's the C1 plan, is that correct? Yeah, C1, right, right over here. And, and Steve Harding, I, I had a preliminary draft of this when I talked with Bob Malley, Public Works Director. And 
the letter, the latest letter dated um, March 16th from Steve Harding was after review of this. Okay. Let me give you a quick overview. In the meeting with um, Steve Harding and Bob Malley, um, Steve was very willing to work within my time restraints. And um, when we did that and I hired Steve Blaze, he gave me a deadline that I needed to get a plan to him, which would give him the enough time to review it properly and decide if it was going to work or not and get a letter over to Maureen. So we were asked to print four copies um, for Maureen, Bob Malley, and Steve Harding, and then I retained a copy to present to you folks tonight. Okay. So Bob and Steve have both reviewed these, have talked, and the engineers talked with both of them as well. Can I just say, Maureen, did the, um, Steve Harding have that plan when he wrote this yes, letter? That, yes. That plan is this plan okay. that came in Friday, and I have a letter I received today that from we, the town engineer, and if you want, I can go over it point by point, which is his comments on the most recently prepared plan. Okay. What I think I'd like to do is have Steve Blaze finish his presentation, then we'll ask you to do that, and then we're going to let the applicant have his full say before we open up the public hearing. Um, one thing I would like is after you're done, yep. if you could start circulating that plan, I'd like to see it a little bit close up and maybe have Jim take a look at it. So Absolutely. I'll, I'll hand it over here. And we have some extras. I have we'll go around. Could you start from the beginning? <coughs> and, Absolutely. And, and let me ask a question before we begin. Sure. Um, this, I assume, will then be included in the package of information with respect to conditions for approval or... Right. Okay. That would be best. Yes. Okay. I want to make sure. Go ahead. Uh, so we were charged with designing the roads, basically, making sure it works, grading lines. What we did is we lifted the roadway up. It's going to be up above grade. It's going to be crowned on the top like a typical roadway. But because it's up high, it's going to naturally create a ditch on each side. That ditch we felt wasn't quite deep enough to convey the water. So we dug it down a little further along the mutually property line. Bob Malley um, expressed that there's, you know, there's a lot of water that comes down Valley Road on the left side of the roadway going in. So he thought a catch basin might, might be a good idea there. We agreed. Uh, there's about an acre of, I ran some, some uh, calculations on the drainage about 1.2 acres that potentially drain to this area. Um, I always draw my lines a little conservative. 12-inch um, pipe does handle that. We show that in our calculations for the 25-year storm event. So what we'll have here is a catch basin on the left as you come in, carrying the flow towards the wetland over here. Um, I believe that pipe is sloping at 1%. It's a pretty shallow, shallow pitch. There won't be much erosion going on here, but we did um, design a riprap pad here to disperse the energy. Um, where the turnaround is, um, we thought there was a, a potential for water to get trapped in there. Um, so we, we have an open-ended culvert in this situation, again with a riprap pad to prevent scour, um, and that actually discharges the same riprap pad from the other culvert. Nick wanted to make sure the drainage was taken care of. There, there's a lot of pipe for, for this caliber roadway, but he wanted to make sure it was taken care of. Told me to design it with pipes, and that's what I did. It's, this is a belt and suspenders approach to stormwater. Um, it works. I can confidently say that. Um, you, know, you know, that that pretty much wraps up. Uh, you know, I have some details as far as the trench. Uh, Steve had asked me to show some details as far as the um, pipe trench, how that's constructed. Um, I did take the I, I revised the water and the electrical utilities. I ran them in the roadway a little more so they wouldn't conflict with the pipes. I have a detail for that here also. And this is the, the catch basin I talked about. And, and that ties the existing catch basin from Daw Road into that new structure there. It the new does not. Um, the reason for that is that pipe is really shallow. And um, I tried but it just doesn't work. The pipe is really close to the ground. If we put in a catch basin, if it were to catch in the pipe, pipes coming out here, the catch basin, top of the catch basin wants to be here. So what we did instead, there's not a lot of water coming to that pipe. What we did instead is we made sure there was an adequate ditch. 
um, to bring it down to this color here. I say we couldn't, we probably could have by adding two structures. We could have put in one structure to lower the pipe, another structure to catch the water, and then another pipe heading out, which would have been a belt suspenders and I guess a life jacket approach. <laughs> It does seem like gross overkill to me. Well, <laughs> Even what you've done seems that way so far. Well, yeah. I, I'm, so uh, this is the east side. I, I can't see that well enough, and I don't yeah. have. So the east side, there's a ditch with the existing catch basin. Yeah, that's exactly that right. Going. There's an existing catch basin on the far side of the road. Right. You know, it carries the flow under the road. And how is it getting from there to the turnaround? That's it's exactly a, in a ditch. Okay. Yeah. And you're pretty sure. confident that that ditch can handle whatever. It's not going to come up and out. Absolutely. And, and just to be safe, um, in fact, there's a natural ditch just grading the roadway mm. off to the land. There's a natural ditch. Sure. There would be a ditch there, but to be safe, we dug it down another, another foot about. Okay. Just to make sure that no water would go towards this property. Would it have been simpler to have a ditch on the other side instead of that pipe? Well, we have both on the other side. We have a ditch and a pipe. All right. Okay. Um, so I'm trying to save you a buck. I, yeah. <laughs> um, it, it will. It's a nicer product. Um, that ditch will stay a lot drier. Yeah, that's true. So it, it's a nicer product. All right. And I say it's overkill. I, I guess my point is that it will work. That's my biggest point. Okay. So is that plan headed this way at some point? Oh, I, I am. It's, a, it's all right. Take your time. Yeah. You want okay. Um, I think it makes sense to let the applicant finish, then we can go through Steve Harding's letters. Okay, go ahead. Nick, why don't you finish your presentation and then we'll... Do you want this plan to start circulating? No, there's, Jim's got it. Jim's got our okay. copy at that end. I just wanted to see it close up, but to it'll, it'll get here. Follow up on the drainage. Um, Steve called me on a Wednesday afternoon and uh, we were trying to figure out, I was pushing for a closed system with the pipe that comes from across Valley Road from across the street. Um, I wasn't a big fan of ditches, and uh, he was saying we were having a hard time with cover, and there wasn't a lot of water coming out of it, and that's when we called the meeting to have Bob come down and meet on the site with us. And I I'm more of a hands-on, I'd like to stand there and look at it. So I brought Bob down, we showed him everything, he agreed with us, he, he thought that that was okay, that the, the ditches would be, that would work properly. Um, John, the neighbor, which is the house closest, the one that's going to have the most effect, um, you know, expressed to me that he felt that we were doing what we needed to do, going above and beyond to make sure that we would keep his basement dry. In light of that, we also retained a um, grading easement onto his property so that we can tie this project together with his, so the landscaping when we're done, it looks like it's going to fit. Um, that's my ultimate goal. That's why I pushed for the closed system on the Casper side, the uphill side, um, is because I don't want standing water. I don't want it to look like a mess. Sure. Um, so I really tried to work with the neighbors the best I could to make sure that this was going to fit in so everybody felt good about the project when we're done. Um, other than that, um, I thank you for reviewing this and uh, I hope we can do approval. Thank you. Okay. So Maureen, the applicant's finished his presentation. Why don't you, let's go through Steve Harding's letter from so this is yesterday. The le yes, this is the letter that normally would have been attached to your memo um, because of the com constrained time frame. We've had to collapse a lot of the stuff into a shorter time period. Um, I'm going to uh, just skip the first paragraph and the first paragraph says that he is, that as noted in our March 9th letter, we support many of the waivers that the applicant is requesting. Paragraph two, the applicant's engineer has prepared a plan locating proposed grades of the road, pipe invert elevations, rim, and pipe slopes. On the submitted plan, the applicant has provided an underground enclosed drainage system to address surface drainage. The included stormwater calculations showing sizing of pipes for a 25-year storm event concludes that a 12-inch and a 15-inch storm drain will discharge surface runoff to a riprap outlet. It appears that this additional drainage information will meet the ordinance stormwater requirements. Paragraph 3. The applicant and his engineer have modified the plans proposing to carry runoff water discharging from an existing storm drain via a proposed ditch. 
This method will eliminate the need of using a T or Y connection at the previously proposed storm drain to the existing storm drain from the intersection of Dar Road and Valley Road. Therefore, the detail of this connection as requested in our March 9th letter is no longer necessary. Four, the applicant is requesting a waiver from the requirements of section 1632B4 on paving. The applicant's plans propose a 14-foot wide crowned graveled surface road with two-foot wide shoulders. The minimum width of the ordinance for a local road is 22 feet with four-foot wide shoulders. In the past, we have traditionally not supported such a waiver. Should the board grant this waiver, note 13 on the plan of private road drawing should be expanded to state that the town will not accept the roadway until it meets town standards. Five, we understand that the current landowner has agreed to provide the town with a drainage easement to convey surface water across the property. The planning board should make receipt of the easement contingent on the project's approval, either before approving the proposed project or as a condition of the project's approval. Six, the dimensions of the turnaround have been added to the plans. However, the width of the turnaround should be expanded from 14 feet to 24 feet to meet the ordinance standards. Seven, engineering construction details and notes should be added to the plan to address erosion control measures such as siltation fence and or erosion berms. A wetland is located to the west of the proposed project and these notes and details will direct the contractor as to steps to be taken to minimize sediment transport off-site. The end. And, and Steve, you've seen that letter. I have. Any concerns, questions, thoughts, comments? Um. None. Um, a lot, I think one through three or more um, acknowledgements, um, statements of fact. Uh, four, as far as the, um, the width of the turnaround, we have the ability to widen that. And we wouldn't have any problem with that, but we were thinking that, you know, that the roadway is going to be, what is it, 14? Yeah. 14 foot wide, and we'd have the turnaround the same idea, 14 foot wide. Um, Nick has spoken with um, the fire chief, I believe, and, and, and he's okay with that. He said he was okay with that as long as the engineer can um, can say that the turnaround will support the weight of a fire engine. Um, the turnaround will be will be the same construction as the private way. Right. So it'll have the same capacity as the private way. Um, so, technically speaking, um, I think in your uh, findings of facts. There's a there's a few waivers. I think we would want to add that waiver if, if the board's amenable to it. Um, of the width of the turnaround, just add that. It's it's kind of a technicality, but no, we we ought to probably add that into there. Um, and and number number four also says we should add a note to the plan, which we fully intend to do. I'm um, saying that. This will not be accepted as a public way until it's brought up to standards, which um, we're not expecting uh, for it to be a public way. Um, and the drainage easement, I believe Nick has executed. Um, I'm sorry, the dimension of the turnarounds was number six, and then. Yeah, I was. I'm reading through four. <laughs> I'm sorry, four was just the width of the roadway, and that's going to be a waiver. Six is the turnaround, and that's where I think that ought to be added as a waiver. And um, it's not being paved, though. Is that right? It's not being paved. And I can elaborate on the. Why don't you step up, Nick? The on the when I went to Peter, and I know he's here tonight, and I'm going to say nothing that's going to corrupt. But uh, when I went to Peter to find out the turning radius of our largest fire truck, he gave me what the factory gave him, which is what we put in the plan, which is that circle in the lower left-hand corner. That's what that truck needs to be able to turn around in a tight area. That's what we put on the plan. In the ordinance, it requests that it's uh, 22 feet wide. 24. 24 feet wide, not, not uh, 14 like we have it. So the truck can turn around in the area that what we've allowed, but it's not what the ordinance for private roads suggests 24 feet wide. The only other thing I'm nervous about is creating a parking area. Right. As I expressed on our site walk, and um, because it's a funny situation, that where the turnaround is is going to be on my property, um, and it just 
by putting in a 24 foot wide area with gravel and I'm just concerned about finding three cars down there and people walking out onto the fields, um, that sort of thing. Um, not to mention that where the turnaround would go would require that we're going to clear a few more trees and we're trying to leave that buffer between the neighbors and where the, we're just trying to do as less disturbance as possible is what we're going for. Okay. Go ahead, Barbara. Maureen, we have a letter from, a memo from the fire chief. And in it, it just says, Maureen, I've reviewed the Tamara proposal, and I'm fine with the turnaround not being paved. The construction of the road is acceptable as long as in, the engineers, the engineers say that it will support the weight of the fire trucks. So I, I don't, I'm not sure what he means. It, if he means that Me. it's fine as long as it's 14 feet, it's not the 24 feet, or well. We're, we're very, very fortunate this evening that the fire chief is in the audience. <laughs> well, I'd like, I'd uh, like to... to not sure that's what he intended to be no, here no, for, no. But, <laughs> but... But to clarify, I think when the, when the fire chief, and I'm sure he will come up and correct me, um, <laughs> but when he wrote the original memo, the question was, the standard requires that turnarounds be paved. And the question was, are you okay with it being a gravel turnaround? And I think his response was, as long as the gravel base will hold the weight of the fire truck, he didn't need for it to be paved. There's a separate issue, and the separate issue is how wide the turnaround has to be. And, and to be frank, um, the fire chief is an expert at driving the <laughs> ladder truck, and the town engineer is the expert at figuring how much space you need to turn it around in. And while 24 feet seems like a huge amount, that is the standard we have in there because we tied the ladder truck to what they call a B40 class vehicle, which is the, the standard engineering classification. We had asked an engineer, here's our ladder truck, what is the closest classification under these engineering standards? They said a B40 class vehicle. And then we drew a turning radius and a turnaround to meet a B40 class vehicle. And the challenge with turnarounds are, the narrower you make the road you're exiting from, the wider you need to make your turnaround, because you end up with less space. So I would be cautious about granting a waiver for reducing the width of the turnaround because you may end up leaving the fire chief with not enough space to turn the ladder truck around without slipping off the gravel base. And that's kind of the end of the issue in terms of safety. I mean, frankly, I accept your position that you don't want to invite people to park four cars there, but signage can fix that part. Yeah. Okay. I have no, if, if that's the feeling of the board, I've, I'm okay with making it 24 feet. Yeah, I thought you as know, much. That's yeah. not, I'm not going to hold it up. I mean, safety is probably the top priority on a project like this, and yeah. I'm I just yeah. not interested in fighting that battle. Yeah, so okay. as far as that, makes, goes, that makes it easy. Yeah, I am willing to increase okay. it to 24 feet. Okay. Doesn't hurt that. So the, the, where we left off was Steve, uh, that was the one concern you, you addressed in Steve Harding's letter. Do you have any other issues or concerns you want the board to address, given that we all just saw this yesterday and some of us this morning and some of us right now? Uh, the um, only other, the, the last one, uh, number seven, I don't see that. I, I think I need to talk with uh, Steve Harding just to make sure what he's getting at there at, in number seven, because we do have a, a detail of siltation fence. You do have that? Yeah, we do. We do. And it, I'm pretty sure it's not something he missed, so I want to talk with him and just make sure that I'm providing what he needs on the plan. And you don't have a problem with the green of that? that no, not at all. If you need no, some no. other detail, you'll put it right on the plan? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. All right. That was a long applica <laughs> applicant's presentation. Are you all set, Nick? Yeah, again, I, I want to thank you guys. I know this is, you know... Oh, we have to open the public hearing first. That's why I'm anxious to make sure you're finished. I'm finished. <laughs> Okay, I'd like to open the public hearing, please. I invite anyone wishing to speak concerning the uh, present application to step up to the microphone, identify yourself, state your address, and, and make your comments. Now's the time. Hi, I'm uh, Penny Jordan, and I am one of the owners of Jordan's Farm on Wells Road in Cape Elizabeth. And I'm also the chair of the uh, Cape Farm Alliance. And um, I'm here tonight to ask that you support Nick's project. And 
for a couple of reasons from a agricultural perspective. To me, it's refreshing uh, to see a young man who really wants to uh, go back in time and create a farmstead, because that's what the farmland in Cape Elizabeth is meant to be. And uh, when Nick mentioned to me one uh, evening and he said that he wanted to create a farm, I went, finally, we're going to have the right type of development in Cape Elizabeth. And from my perspective, the development in Cape Elizabeth should be leveraging farmland to produce food because that's what it's there for and it can serve the whole community. And as we think about uh, local food, food security, and really creating a sustainable community, Nick is a young man who's taking a step that we should all look at, and I hope that other young people in the community will follow. So I hope you support his plan. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Good evening. Uh, Frank Stroud, 1184 Shore Road, and I just want to take a couple of minutes to uh, support Nick's application for the extension of Daw Road. Um, over the past 50 years, Cape Elizabeth has seen a decline in, lo in the local farmland and farming activity. Recently, however, with the hard work of Cape's farmers and the public's interest in buying local and farm fresh produce, there has been a resurgence in the farming community. When Cape residents were asked, 83% believe maintaining working farms as a priority in town. It's inspiring to see a young resident willing to put time, energy, and resources into developing a new beef farm on the Maxwell property. This will develop a new working farm, help maintain one, as well as provide some wonderful open space. I've known Nick for many years. I've watched as he kept some of his animals at Shady Oak Farm, and as he developed his landscaping business. He is a very, very hardworking young man, and I know that this new venture will be successful. We should be doing more to encourage businesses like this here in town. <clears throat> so therefore, I want to thank the planning board, the code enforcement officer, the town planner, for their work to help see that this project move forward. And I hope Nick's application will be approved tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak concerning this application? Step up to the microphone, identify yourself, and give us your input. Uh, my name's John Holmes. I live at 27 Valley Road. Uh, <clears throat> the property just to the right of where Nick wants to put the private way. And when he um, first came to me to tell me about the project, my first instinct really was, you know, it's okay, but this is my concern, and my concern is the water uh, in, in the basement. The house is roughly 45, 50 years old, never had a drop of water in there. I came to Nick with, that was my only concern, and you guys have been down there. I, I met quite a few at the walkthrough, and I was part of that meeting with Bob Malley and the engineer and Nick the other day, and I really feel like Nick's gone above and beyond the call of duty here to, to make sure that my concerns are taken care of. So I'm here to really ask you to support the project too. I think it's gonna be great for the neighborhood. Nick grew up there. I grew up in the neighborhood, I moved back to the neighborhood, and now Nick's going to do the same thing, so it's going to, you know, it'll be fun to have him as a neighbor, and I really look forward to it. So I ask you to support it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak concerning this project? Don't be shy. Anyone else wishing to speak concerning the project? Third time, anyone else wishing to speak concerning the project? Hearing none, I'd like to close the public hearing and open up the floor to comments, questions, thoughts, or concerns of the planning board members. My only concern is, do we have a comprehensive list of the waivers? Well, given, I think the ones that are in the proposed motion are still comprehensive in terms of waivers, but I think we may have some additional conditions that, that would be reflected in Steve's letter. And I think Steve Blazes, we don't need to ask for the, add the additional waiver on the turnaround because the applicant said he's gonna 
okay. do, do what the standard requires. Actually, that would be a condition in Steve Harding's letter, so. Yeah, I don't have, I, I have well, the it's March floating. 9th letter, that's the only. I think, uh, oh, here it is. I don't know has it. Here. So you're all set, Tom? Yep. Any, any other comments, questions? If there aren't any, I would entertain the floor for motions. Um, presumptively, we're not reading all the findings of fact uh, separately, so uh, I, no. I'd like to <laughs> make a motion for the board to consider. Go ahead. <laughs> findings of fact number one, Nick Tamaro is requesting private road review under the subdivision ordinance to extend Daw Road to a new lot which requires review under section 16-3-2 road design and construction standards. Number two, the town engineer has recommended that additional information is needed to confirm that water will not migrate to abutting properties. Number three, the applicant is proposing to build a road that looks more like a private access way than a private road. Consequently, the following waivers are included as part of this application. A, waiver from maximum 3% slope to a maximum 5% slope. B, waiver of paving the first 50 feet to paving the first 10 feet. C, waiver of a 22 foot wide traveled surface to a 14 foot wide traveled surface. D, waiver from installing monumentation of the private right road right of way. E, waiver from installing curbing. F, waiver to not pave the emergency turnaround. Four, the application substantially complies with section 16-3-2 road design and construction standards. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Nick Tamaro for private road review of the extension of Daw Road to a new lot be approved, subject to the following conditions. The plans be augmented by the comments of the town engineer in his later letter dated 3-16-2009, and I'm going to leave that as inclusive. Mm -hmm. Two, that related maintenance agreements and drainage easement deed be signed by the applicant and submitted in a form acceptable to the town attorney. And three, that there be no issuance of a building permit or alteration of the site until the above condition has been met. Conditions have been met. Conditions, pardon me. Have. Have been met. The only uh, question I had before we move on to a possible second to the motion is, I thought I heard Nick say that there is, or Steve say that there is monumentation shown on the plan. So are you still looking for a waiver? Of, uh, so that would be 3D. Go ahead, Maureen. The standards for subdivision ordinance monumentation are greater than what Nick is proposing I to see. offer for monumentation. And that's okay. I just wanted to clear on the record that do we still do need four inch square granite, you know, gr yeah, granite, granite monuments. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Fine. Then it's fine as, as proposed. Um, so Tom Dolan having made a motion. Do I hear a second? Barbara Schenkel. Do I have any discussion on the motion? I want to discuss and just make sure that by um, incorporating the entire letter, the turnaround will now be 24 feet wide instead of 15. Okay. Correct. We can include that, it. Uh, well, that, that's a specific waiver. I think the engineer is correct. And given that the fact that they're not, there's no waiver request, then it has to comply. Right? Do I interpret yeah, that? Yeah. Right? The, the paragraph 6 in the March 16th letter specifically reads, the dimensions of the turnaround have been added to the plans. However, the width of the turnaround should be expanded from 14 feet to 24 feet to meet the ordinance standards. Okay. As a result, okay. actually, I think you're correct. It would say that the March 16th letter inclusive, excluding condition number six or paragraph six, because I do think that the intent of which is that it would be a 14 foot turnaround and not the 24 foot. No, no, 24 on the screen. Oh, 24. So actually, I amend, leave it as it was originally was, 24. The letter says it all. Right. The, tw the letter says it. Okay. I'm okay. So, Barbara, any other discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion? All opposed? None. Motion carries 5 nothing. Thank you so much. Thank you. I would, I would like to say one thing. Nick, you worked beautifully with the board, and you were very cooperative, and we thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Uh, we have two more items on the agenda. Board's pleasure, a five-minute break before we get started on the next one.
picado. Ok. Ok.
Okay, the next item on the agenda, uh, the Credo private driveway, private access way permit. Jeanette Credo is requesting a private access way permit for a vacant lot located at 112 Delano Park, town tax map use 7-12, lot 12, section 19-7-9, private access way permit, public hearing. The applicant or their representative could step up to their to the microphone, identify themselves, and make a presentation. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, board members. My name is Bob Metcalf. I'm with Mitchell Associates, representing uh, the Credo application. And with me tonight is Mrs. Credo's daughter, Nancy Martin's at the rear, and Bob Danielson. Uh, and what I thought I'd do, based on Maureen's uh, review here, is just. If you want, I'll just go over the uh, the changes that have been made since the last time we were here. Please. And address some of the comments that are in uh, some of the memos that have gone forward. Uh, in our memo that we uh, dated February 27th, the first item on there was to show the driveway on lot four. Uh, and we have done that. And I'll get used to this and hopefully I don't point at anybody's eyes. We've added the driveway on to lot four. And subsequent to making that change, we had received uh, Steve Harding's memo uh, in regards to the turnaround for the ladder truck, which is the WB40. And uh, we had some comments. We had made a change, sent it off to Steve, and uh, did not get a response back, unfortunately, until this afternoon. But we have amended the plan to address this. Steve's concern uh, today was in terms of on this curve here, was to expand the two-foot gravel shoulder, basically from station zero plus 50, uh, all the way across till we come to uh, station one plus zero zero. And I've given Maureen a sketch uh, to pass out to you tonight, uh, which is highlighted showing what that change is uh, and attached to that is an email response from Steve uh, confirming that that is what he was looking for as far as that change was concerned. Uh, in regards to uh, the WB40 for the actual drive access, we're still showing a 12, we're showing a 12 foot wide paved uh, driveway, uh, but to minimize the amount of pavement, if you look to either side of the drive, uh, that's a stabilized turf area similar to what we've done over here on the emergency turnaround. This six feet on either side plus a 20 foot radius to allow the fire truck, to, the ladder truck, to be able to maneuver in uh, to the driveway. Uh, we obviously do not have a location of the house at this point, but that is where the driveway location would come in. So the ladder truck can make the turn so the front wheels and the rear wheels will be able to stay on a stabilized area. So that was to uh, address that particular item. Uh, the other item to add on the plan was to show the 250 foot shoreline uh, location and that has been added to the plan up in this location up in here. Uh, Steve's memo, uh, the last memo regarded changing uh, the legend and the driveway look, uh, the legend. We had had a graphic that showed the setback lines as well as what the 10-foot easement line is running along here. And we've correct, changed the graphic so it's, there's enough of a distinction and then we did change it in the legend. I'm not going to point towards the legend in case I get some of the eyes. But basically the graphic that we've used on the plan now conforms with the text and the graphic in the legend itself, which is to the lower right. Uh, again, on this, we're just reiterating from Steve's comment that we're requesting a waiver uh, up from the standard down to a 14-foot section of roadway with a 2-foot gravel shoulder. Uh, 12 foot pay, it would be 12-foot paved with a 2-foot gravel shoulder for a 14-foot uh, wide travel way. And then we've uh, constructed the uh, emergency turnaround according to the town standards that the primary core of the turnaround is going to be this porous concrete paper which the code officer has reviewed and approved. And then to get the additional width for the turning, we've gone with the grass stabilized turf on either side so that we don't have to have a 24 foot wide paved section, but we do meet the uh, stabilization. The base below that turf area is the same depth as what the road base is required to be. Uh, let's see. The fire chief, and I know he's here tonight, I know we had uh, pretty much agreed in having reviewed the, uh, the layout for the road and the turnaround. And again, to address Steve's comments of having the engineered review, we have addressed the additional uh, turning uh, maneuvering for the fire truck to basically get into the lot, uh, the, on lot number, the driveway on lot number four. Uh, we got a Maureen's memo that uh, we just received. Uh, there were a couple of items in there. 
fajn, ale možno. Toto je nepáhol, to je to, že hovorím. On the second page of Maureen's memo today, she made a reference as far as site distance, and this was something that hadn't been addressed on the plan, and uh, what we have done is we've looked at that, this being, in terms of your subdivision classification, the lowest classification you have is a local road, uh, which is based on either a 20 or 25 mile per hour speed limit. The speed limit posted in Delano Park is at 15 miles per hour. And what we've looked at is taking that local road standard based on miles per hour and translating to a 15 mile per hour that comes down to six feet per mile per hour. And that would translate into a 90 foot uh, sight line distance. And we've taken from the 10 feet back from what would be the, the right of way line, if you will, at the driveway here and constructed the, set, the sight line. And that would translate to about a 70 foot view shed to the left. Uh, which comes to about station zero plus 60 on the plan. And to the right, uh, we're looking at coming down around 200 plus zero 08, which takes that up to 80 feet. Again, this is really a private way that's serving just two lots. It is on a curve. There isn't a true traffic situation, and primarily the only traffic that's going to be coming in this location are going to be the two residents that live in those two lots. And we feel as though the site distance is adequate to address the type of use that's there. I think that I don't think there were any other issues as far as the Marines plan was concerned. I know there was an issue uh, it was just a site distance issue. Uh, I know there was an issue with the fire chief had with the sprinkler system and I'm gonna let uh, Bob Danielson address that particular item right, unless you have any questions immediately on the site that you'd like me to respond to. Just to make sure on the site distance, Bob. Yes. Um, so point number two, or in terms of our information, mm -hmm. it's only 75 feet and 80 feet then. Correct. In each direction. Right. Okay. Thank you. You all set? Set. Okay. Good evening, Bob Danielson. Uh, and just quickly, I want to address a comment that the uh, fire chief made in a memo to, uh, I believe, Maureen David Monday, um, suggesting that this uh, building to be constructed on the lot be sprinkler. And at this point right now, there's no lot, uh, no house being proposed, and the uh, credos have the property under contract, and the owner has, or the buyer has indicated to us that he probably won't build the house for a couple of years. And all that I would suggest is that maybe the uh, issue be delayed until such time as a building permit be requested uh, for two reasons. One, uh, the fire chief uh, said that he's relying on a hydrant on Shore Road. And there's actually a private, not private, there is a hydrant within 200 feet of the property. But I spoke to the chief tonight and he said that he does not rely on that hydrant. And I'd like to get more information on that hydrant. Um, there's a question as to whether the, the hydrant is, is appropriate or not, and um, I think for the uh, safety of Delano Park, it may be important to find out whether that hydrant is appropriate for this and could actually be used um, to service this lot. Uh, and the other issue is, with respect to a private access way, I think the planning board's job under your own standards is to determine if the turnarounds are appropriate for fire trucks, not to determine whether the houses to be constructed are sprinklered, which I think is a code enforcement uh, issue. So I would just ask that I'm not denying that it's a safety issue. I'm just asking that or mentioning that it's not appropriate under this particular permit for the planning board to decide that issue now, as we may have a very different situation when we come to apply for a building permit, meaning that we could find that that hydrant works, we could find that there's a very different uh, system in town at that time that could be several years down the road. And what I don't want to do is saddle a future homeowner with something that may or may not be appropriate. Would, would, would it, um, some sort of condition where the building permit couldn't be pulled until either the 
you know, it was determined that this was adequate or it got sprinkled. I mean, basically, we're trying to set, satisfy fire safety issues I, um, through I the am. approval process. And I, I'm not suggesting it should come out or come in. I'm just trying to find out what the, what the owner would be willing to agree to in terms of conditioning it so that if the fire chief says, you know what, that, that hydrant, you, you know, is, is going to get upgraded or a million other things could happen before he builds it. Some, some kind of condition that references before a building permit can be pulled that the issue be revisited as opposed to saying that the sprinkler has to go in because, again, I don't know if that's going to be appropriate at the time. But we have no, no objection to the safety issue. I right. just think it's premature. Okay. 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 Thank, um, thank just to get the procedure back where we are. So the applicant has done its presentation. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, and I just I just add one thing to that is we're hoping the board can make a favorable decision on this this evening. Uh, one of the concerns are expressed this way back when we first came in a sketch plan. Uh, Mrs. Credo is very important for her to be able to move forward and sell this property, and we've already unfortunately gone through more months than we ever anticipated having to go through to get this approved, and sure. to be able to go away with approval this evening. Thank you. Okay. Uh, if the applicant's finished his presentation, what I'd like to do is uh, open up the public hearing and invite anyone wishing to speak concerning the application of uh, Jeanette Credo, Credo for a private access way permit to step up to the microphone, identify themselves, and make your comments. For, against, neutral. Going once. Anyone wishing to speak concerning this application? That's the second time, last time. Anyone wishing to speak? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing and open up the floor to comments from board members and the town planner. Tom. Mr. Chair, I'd like the record to reflect that I'll be abstaining from oh, any sorry. vote and I've reduced myself from any conversation with okay. respect to this matter. Thank you. Liza? Is it true that the sprinkler issue is outside the purview of this no, no i don't i don't i'm i don't see it that way i mean it's it's part of our responsibility in, in granting access to a lot to create a lot is to ensure that that all fire safety issues be addressed i, I have no trouble with some sort of condition that says if there's some other way to address the issue even in the future before a building can, permit can be issued uh i think um you know it's appropriate to do that i just don't know how it can be drafted other than to say this shall be done but if the fire chief decides it's not necessary later on for whatever reason um, that the applicant can either come back to us for a change or um, simply obtain the permit as long as he's satisfied barbara do you have a question well, i think there's a way to do it i i mean i think uh, the re request is very reasonable to say that the situation be evaluated right. at the time that a permit is requested and that there be either uh, available water or that sprinklers have to be installed in the house, but at least to have the option of looking at it. But you're saying how would two years down the road, nobody's going to remember this? And how well, no, it'll, it'll be in the file before the building permit gets pulled. Right. Maureen, that's not it. That's not no, and I, I mean, in, in theory, you ought to be able to put a condition on the approval, and when the uh, applicant or whoever owns the property comes forward for a building permit application, the code enforcement officer should pull the file. He actually gets a copy of every approval letter and, and should be able to check and make sure that any conditions have been met. So if you were to say that, you know, the, the property would have to be sprinkled unless it's determined by the fire chief that adequate water supply is available, to fight a fire without a sprinkling system, or maybe you attach the 1,000 gallons per minute standard to it. Or you just need to make sure you reference it back to the fire chief, because the code enforcement officer really does not look at fire support when he issues a building permit. But it actually may, you know, it's easy for me to say it may be a benefit to sell the place because it reduces your insurance costs. Um, it's just a lot. What's that? It's just a lot. But I mean, for a house, I mean, if you have a house, a sprinkled house. Oh, meaning, yeah, I, I got the impression the buyer's moving in now when he does build, but yeah, I don't know the detail on that. Just from the engineering point of view. Okay. Any other comments, questions from board members?
Hearing none, I'll open the floor up to motions. We've got a motion. Um, I don't have any questions. Yeah. If okay. you have a motion for yeah. the a uh, motion for the board to consider findings of fact. Jeanette Credo is requesting a private access way permit to make an existing vacant lot without frontage on a town road buildable. The lot is the second to the last lot at the end of Delano Park entrance number one and requires review under section 19-7-9 private access ways. Two, the town engineer and fire chief have concerns that the driveway for lot four will not provide access for the ladder truck. Three, no site distance information has been provided, but it sounds like it has now. So I, I guess that uh, site distance information, I mean, we meant that site distance information has been provided. Number four, compliance with the public access way standards has been achieved in part by placement of facilities on private property. Five, the applicant application substantially complies with section 19-7-9 private access ways and section 19-8-3 resource protection regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts preserved, the application of Jeanette Credo for a private access way permit to make an existing vacant lot without frontage on a town road buildable located second to the last lot at the end of Delano Park, entrance number one, be approved subject to the following conditions. That the plan be, be revised for the town engineer's letter dated March 9th, 09, paragraphs two and four. Um, it looks like number two is moot, if I'm reading that correctly. Anybody, any thoughts on that? Okay. Well, it was provided, right? What's that? That site distance was provided. No, no, two in the letter. What's that? You mean two in, in well, Allie's letter, don't you? The number two talks about the site, di site distance two in the that needs addition. to be provided. Oh. Well, it has been provided. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's moved. Okay. So in three, that the 10-foot easement deed, turnaround easement and maintenance agreement be signed and submitted in a form acceptable to the town, in, town attorney. Four, uh, three, that there be no recording of the plan until the plans and other materials have been revised and submitted to the town planner and the above conditions have been met. Well, we want to talk about the, uh, in the uh, sprinkler versus yeah. adequate. And I'm drafting something, Jim. If okay. You hold on a minute. I'm Is that something you want me to read? or? Well, I'm I just hash it out here. Roughly what I'm working with is that no building permit shall be issued until either building plans are submitted showing uh, the installation of residential sprinkler system or the fire chief determines that there is adequate water flow at the closest hydrant. Is that? He's nodding yes. Yes. The fire chief, there's adequate water flow at the closest hydrant. Okay, I agree either, with either that. One. I agree with that. Can I make a request that sure. that condition four is read by Mr. Hubner be the last condition. Right, right, that that would be five and what I just read. No, not five, only three. Because we eliminated two. We eliminated, we eliminated two, three. so I may have said three twice. I'm not can sure I, if I did. Can I make another request? <laughs> <laughs> that, that under item two, that it at least says that the site distance shall be added to the plans. Okay. All right. So number two will read that the site distance shall be added to the plans, right? Yes. Yeah. Three is as read by Mr. Hubner. Four is the building permit no. that I just read no. about building permit. No Sprinklers. Right, no building permit shall be issued until either building plans are submitted showing the installation of residential sprinkler system or the fire, de fire chief determines that there is adequate water flow at the closest side. We will have discussion on the motion, so if anyone's good. Um, and then you wanted, that would be bring present four to number five, that there be no recording of the plan until the plans and other materials have been revised and submitted to the town planner and the above conditions have been met. Any other questions, comments, thoughts, or omissions on the, uh, on the proposed motion? Right. Mr. Hubner, as amended. 
I'll second. Okay. A motion having been made and seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? Does either the fire chief or the applicant want to be heard on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion. All opposed? Motion carries 4 nothing, and the record should reflect that Tom Dolan did not participate in the discussion of the motion or the uh, application. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If I may ask just one other favor. Sure. Uh, the plans will be revised and ready in the memoriam by the end of the day tomorrow. And if it's possible that the board could come into town hall and sign the plan, again, it's uh, in order to expedite the, uh, the sale of the property. I have no trouble with that. It's just as soon as all our schedules allow, Maureen lets us know, we can just swing by the office. When, when will you have them there, Bob? I will have the plan in by the end of the day tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. I know Maureen wants to, probably wants to look at it first, but uh, we'll have it in by the end of the day. If you could send me an email when you do it, because I'm out of town for two weeks. Yeah. You're, you're out of town for what? two weeks? Starting Sunday. Sunday, okay. Got to get it in. Before the end of the week. It'll be, end of the day. It'll be the end of the day tomorrow. Sooner if I can. Okay. Thank you. How many, si how many signatures do you need? <laughs> how many signatures do you need? I need four. I need four. I need, I need all of them. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Next. I'll, I'll, I'll write that up for you. So you don't have to do that. Right? <laughs> um, next item on the agenda is what the crowd has been waiting for all night. Yeah. <laughs> Good, place. Good placement there, Maureen. <laughs> <laughs> the um, Shoreland Zoning Public Hearing. You know what, Maureen, I gave away my agenda with the what I need to read on. Oh, there you go. There you go. Uh, last item on the agenda tonight, 2009 Shoreland Zoning Amendments. The Tape, Cape Elizabeth Town Council has referred to the Planning Board the update of the state mandatory Shoreland Zoning which includes amendments to the zoning ordinance and official zoning map, map, map section 19-10-3 zoning ordinance, ordinance amendments. Um, what we have scheduled is a public hearing on, on these proposed changes. Uh, we've reviewed the changes. For next month. Oh, that's for next month. All you got to do is set it for public set hearing. Set it for public Oh, I thought hearing. we were having the public hearing tonight. No. Oh, no. no. So all I need is a motion to uh, set this for a public hearing, which I just saw made by Tom Dolan. I second the motion for the board to consider that based on the proposed amendments, the planning board tables the 2009 Shoreland Zoning Amendments and map changes to the zoning ordinance to the April 27, 2009 meeting of the planning board, at which time a public hearing shall be held. Motion having been made by Tom Dolan. Second. <laughs> it having been seconded by everybody else on the board. Uh, all in favor of the motion? I will now entertain motion. Chair, I'd like to, to make a motion. Yes. I'd like to make a motion. Wish everybody happy St. Patrick's Day and to adjourn the meeting. <laughs> Good evening. Second. Second. All in favor of the motion? Aye. We'll be meeting at Kelly's now. <laughs> that, that Maureen asked us to respond to something, but it's too late, Maureen. It's uh, about the timber harvesting. Um, yeah, I, I did, in the memo, I said there were things that had been changed and I wanted to make sure you were aware of it and uh, Where is that? You know, that you're, you're aware of it you, apparently you're okay stimulating reading <laughs> where's that, that paragraph in bold you were talking about um, it's in there okay I'll find it I'm still on the list. And some other time well, <laughs> okay yeah you're right there was a there was a paragraph that I did There was no. one paragraph. If we could just hold on another minute. She's fine. Yep. We can just deal with it next week. Okay. How's that? Ah, page 34. The, since you've officially adjourned, if I could just ask you for next month, we if you could. I'm not saying anything that I can't live with on the air. That sign isn't always accurate. On page 35, 
there's a paragraph in bold, and if you could at least look at it and be ready to make a decision on that for next month. I didn't hear what you said. Page 35. It's the first I paragraph. Yeah, the, the paragraph is completely in bold. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that's bad. That's okay. Right. It's beautiful.